All right, all right, all right, guys. We're going into the second group match of Group A here to start things off. And, uh, oh, looks like I've, I'm changing the soundboard. I'm turning sound. I'm turning it off. Don't worry, guys. Production issues aside, we are here. Kumio in the top right, representing Sidestorm Gaming, the Terran who I model myself after. A man who tries to win at high-level Terran, not with the speed of his clicking and his micro, but with his strategy and his unique styles, leveraging mech and a lot of tech units more than anybody else does. And he's going to open up with the command center first. Super sick. Unfortunately for him, he does run into several in his first match in this group stage. Now, Kumiho's fresh back from the military, but he is going to have to step up very quickly to make it out of this group. Obviously, we've got Max Pax and Parting, who are playing the other opening group, but we just did play that group. Um, the winners and losers of that waiting for the winners and losers of this match. So... Cyril, the big favorite for this group, he is uh, one of the highest seeds for the entire tournament. And he's also someone who I don't think is going to be too weak versus mech. Now, what's interesting is he's gone for an early gas, a pool, into a hatchery, has Cyril. And I don't know if that's defensive or offensive, but an interesting mix-up here on Hardwire. This is, of course, one of the new maps for those who don't know. Um, we are actually playing the latter version of the map right now. Which, as I realize, I think maybe we should do what Home Story Cup did and do the TLMC versions after this map. Uh, I say looking to dot over here because I forgot to think about that. Which means, guys, there's actually a Reaper Ledge. Is this the map? Yeah, I think... Isn't there? Isn't this the map with the Reaper Ledge or am I thinking of a different one? I think it might be this one here, maybe? Or maybe, I'm, maybe it's Glittering Ashes. Maybe they took it out. Maybe they took it out of the ladder map as well. I doubt it. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is the map where there's a, a ledge where you can put three Widow Mines or three Lurkers on top of it. Um, there's also a spot here where you could technically siege two tanks on that ledge. Interestingly enough, in Home Story Cup, which literally just finished last night, they played the TLMC versions of the maps, which were edited by the map makers to remove some of those accidental features. Um, on Curious Minds, for instance, they got rid of the no creep zone. You'll, you would have noticed that in, in, in several, uh, several's matches there, up against Clem and a few other matches where that map came out. But I'm not sure if Hardwire actually has any big issues. People are pointing out in chat, it's Glittering Ashes that actually has the, what appears to be an Overlord pillar. It looks just like one of these, but you can actually jump up to it with a Reaper. And you could also put a bunch of Widow Mines or uh, Lurkers up there. People figured that one out on Reddit very early. Nonetheless, let's focus on this match here as Gumiho does go into Hellion production after this very early command center, already dropping his mules like mad. Zergling's going to run in. And that's a bit of a punish there because the Hellions aren't quite out. How many SCVs does he lose? One, two, three by the looks of it. Uh, it's a bit of a cost. It feels like, you know, the command center first, the advantage of that opening, already undone by this uncharacteristically aggressive opening from Serral. Now, Serral did hurt his own economy to do this, guys. His thirds delayed a lot. It went down after three minutes and he's gone overlord speed. But I think getting three SCVs does a lot to offset the harm that this sort of build does to yourself. Where... If you do this as Serral, you don't find any damage. CC first kicks in, and then Kumiho comes across the map with like a brutal Hellbat timing. You're in big trouble. But he scouts the armory the moment. The moment it goes out. Do you even, do you just cancel that? If I'm Gumiho, I cancel that for sure. He drops a fusion core as well. I think he knows it's going to be scouted. And he's like, well, we're, we're playing battle cruises. Now he could, no, he's not. He's going to swap the starport onto the reactor. He's going to swap that. Oh, he's not. He's going PCs. Oh, I got so excited for a moment. So for those who don't know, guys, if you actually get range libs, you can outrange queens and stalkers. There's a really, really brutal spot back here where if they take this this third, this linear third, you can put a lib there denying there and a lib denying some of the mineral patches and gases there. But I guess it's he's not going for that. He's actually going battle cruiser hellbat, but it's all being scouted, which means so far this is perfect. For Serral. He sees everything. He's ready for everything. For Gumio, the trick is here. He's got to lean out of this pressure without overcommitting. He can't throw any units away. And I think because Serral's such a respectful player who's going to build a lot of anti air to deal with the, the battle cruiser, he's going to build a lot of Zerglings and Queens and whatnot to deal with the Hellions. You maybe can transition out of this as long as you don't throw any units away. It's just a very unfamiliar zone for a Terran to make so many units, so much tech towards aggression. And then to not attack with it? Well, that's just alien. That's not something you do as a Terran player. He 
He's trying to set up a three prong, guys. He's going to do a Hellbat, Hellbat Marine attack on the third. He's going to teleport a Battle Cruiser in, and he's going to put four Hellbats up in the main base as well. But he's already taken a lot of damage. Six Queens are out. Seventh Queen on the way. No Spore in the natural. One in the main going down very late. None in the third. Is Several maybe underestimating this attack. Battle Cruiser will kick in about 20 seconds. One Overlord going down. Good damage for Gumi. He's going to drop his third on location. Gumi knows he needs to go high risk, high reward to get back into this. The economy actually looks really weak for Serral right now. Only ahead of a few SCVs, but Banelings. Oh, Spready, Spready, Spready. Gumiho tries to do a Spready. His Banelings getting great hits on those Marines does Serral. Oh, look at that. Oh, the Hellbats are getting absolutely jumped on. A Ling run by at the same time hits the natural expansion. This is disaster for Gumiho. And I think it's a perfect style to play against such a creative Terran. Gumiho's all surprises. He's all wild tech switches and surprising pieces of aggression. And if you play early Ling Rush, get a little bit of damage, get control, and then you go into Overlord speed, you see everything that's coming and you can prepare for it. Now, it's not over just yet. Six, seven drones go down. Battle Cruiser gets out of there, but it takes some hefty damage. If those Lings can get in and do some more, that would be huge. But there's still four Hellions there. He's going to go for it. What can he find? Oh, Gumiho not watching. Uh-oh. Now he can pull the SCVs. Good micro on the aliens. He says, come into my fire alley, dick. And Serral does end up pulling back there. Third command center managed to finish. That's very important. Serral actually didn't scout that. So Serral right now is seeing no third command center. And he's kind of like, hey, what? Are you only on two base? Have I got this game in the bag? Well, economically, yeah. He's still up 20 workers as another overlord does fall. And this is good pickups for the battle cruiser. It's an 11th or 10th kill there. How do you recover from here? Gumiho going into mech. He's going to try and play that one out. Serral, one of the best anti-mech players in the world. When you think about players who are good versus mech, you think Serral. You know, when you think of players who sometimes look sloppy versus mech, maybe Raynor sometimes. Solar occasionally looks godlike versus mech and occasionally looks terrible against it. Some, most of the time, somewhere in the middle. Alien's not going to find a way in, but Serral... I, I don't know the last time anyone saw Serral lose even a game to Mech. If anyone in Twitch chat, in the YouTube comments, in the Twitterverse, anyone anyone out there at all can find a game where Serral lost to Mech, please link me up. I'd love to find it because I don't know if it's happened since he became a really, really good player. Like, I, I've seen Raynor die to it on Blackburn. Maybe Serral dropped a game to someone on Blackburn. I, I just can't quite think of it. Um, maybe Marine Lord or something pulled the map out? I, I can't quite see if anything comes to mind. Anyways, Hellions are going to pick off a few Creep Tumors there. Gumiho's still playing active. Muta's going to come out for Serral. Very good control unit. He's got 10 Mutas. Six more on the way. The Battle Cruisers are going to go for a bit of a flyby. Hellions trying to get out of there. Battle Cruisers will come in. It's a big, beefy hatchery. Not easy to confirm that kill. And remember, because the hatchery is so beefy, not only can the mutas come over, Queens can as well. Transfuse is ready. They can save that hatch. Gumiho's got to get out. He's got to get out of there. He's going to teleport home. He does lure those mutas back a little bit. He's got a few cyclones. He's trying to build Thors right now. They're not ready. He's got a few turrets. He's got to repair the BCs. This is the danger area. It's hard for him to secure this ground. Gumiho kind of needs to hug his missile turrets right now. And that's why the mutas are able to get out in the open in between the bases where there isn't much of that anti yet. Three battle cruisers is a pretty hefty number, but he can fly right past and BCs aren't fast. Thor, first Thor's almost out. It's not there just yet. Gumiho likes to defend mutas with the smallest possible response. He knows that you go too heavy on the Thors and the over response and things can get out of control very quickly. A Ravager swap, a Roach attack can catch you off guard. Gumiho weathers the storm for now. He's got a fourth command center on the way. He wants to get up to that big old macro mech game. Melee carapace on the way there for Serral Infestation Pit, as well as Roach Warren. Battle Cruise is going to look fantastic here. Just picking off small numbers of muters, even if you focus them. The Battle Cruisers can teleport out of there. They've got a get out of jail free card. Not really something you enjoy trading with, as it just hands them kills on a platter. Baneling run by is not finding massive, massively efficient trades. You don't need massively efficient trades, though. When you're at 90 workers, Terran's struggling to get a fourth command center up. I gotta say, the durability of Gumiho is showing. The fact that he's able to kind of just keep playing and drag his way back towards parity in this game. It's very impressive. Is it gonna be enough, though? Triple Yamato, triple teleport. Uh oh, he waited too long. That's a dead BC. Not worth it. Not worth it. Battle Cruiser is worth, for those who don't know. Uh, three and a half muters. A muter is 100 minerals, 100 gas. A battle cruiser is 400 minerals, 300 gas. So it's about 
let's say four meters for each battle cruiser. So getting three, killing the battle cruiser, well worth it for Serral. And there we go. Ling's gonna come in. Any pickoffs he gets, these Lings are so cheap, they cost him almost nothing. And any damage he gets is massive. The muters pull back. Lings just pick off a few units, pull on in, pull on out. 17 roaches on the way, so he's going to swap into roaches and ravages and keep looking for the angles. He's still heavy on muters, and those units aren't the strongest at this stage, but he'll keep upgrading them, and if he can avoid fighting the Thors head-on, that'll be big. Now, an interesting lesson I've recently learned, guys, is that if you're playing an expert muter player, they won't clump enough for Thor Splash to almost ever be effective. One or two Thors is good, but Widow Mind Splash is actually better. And I've recently just changed my mind and said, screw it. If I'm using Thors for anti-air, I put high impact payload on. Gumiho has not chosen to do that, which means he could get a massive splash in the center of the muters if they're clumped, or he could do almost no damage because they shoot so slowly otherwise. Another bailing run by his big. The muters dive in the main. They get the turret there. Battle cruisers come back to fight him. But guess what? Uh-oh. They're going to get jumped on top. They have to teleport out of there. Thor's looking for those big shots. As I said, if they hit the center of mass like that shot did, it does a lot. Meanwhile, Thor's out in the open. He's trying to go for a max Thor. Held that push. Losing roaches in small numbers is so bad. Serral forgot roach speed, though. Possibly one of the most platinum league attacks I've ever seen out of Serral. The 12-minute non-roach speed attack. He gets two Thors, though, and he's rich as all hell, so it doesn't matter. I think it's any trade's a good trade. He just wants to lower the Thor count and trade out these early game units. He's going for the Infest attack behind it, which is, as well as the double Evo upgrades, going to allow him to neuroparasite the mass Thor army. And if there's no tanks or liberators to outrange and deal with the infestors, Zerg just takes the Thors, turns them into their own units, takes the battle cruisers. Thors and battle cruisers, some of the best units in the game in general. Very multi purpose. Shoot up, they shoot down, they shoot everything. And then the Zerg takes them and says, they're mine now. And infestors definitely have the potential to be borderline overpowered if they find the correct engagement against them. Still, Mass Thor, he's not building any tanks. Okay, this is just wild. No Cyclones, no tanks. He's just like, I'm going to make like 15 Thors and hope you can't deal with it. But he's only got 1-1 one, one upgrades as well. And Serral, look at this. He's finding the trades. He's using the mobility. The BCs try to teleport to punish, but number one Thor goes down. Number two Thor goes down. And you know what? The battle cruisers do punish a little bit. And even though it's kind of cost efficient for Gumiho, I don't know if cost efficient is enough. He's hanging in there. He's surviving. But Serral leisurely denying the map. He's got overlords everywhere. He's got zerglings everywhere. Pooping creep. He's going to try and get some engagement in the main. He does get the medevac down. Does he? No. Yes. He gets the Thor and the medevac. This is a lot of muters for it. These trades cost for cost. Not amazing for Serral. Until you look at the economy and you remember that this is Zerg versus Terran. Where Zerg's meant to be down four or 5,000 resources by this point. He's almost even. And you're like, oh, this is actually fantastic trading. This is, in fact, godlike trading. And Gumio, he's just... Oh my god, he's going to do Bernie Boys? Oh my god. Okay, guys, Gumio says, I love the smell of burnt Zerg in the morning. He's going to go for Hellbat Drops on the army. He's got four medevacs. He's pumping out more. Unfortunately, he forgot his 2-2 upgrades. And it's partially because he lost an armory. He's trying to build a second one. The muters have been such a pain. But his whole idea is he wants to try and use the Thors in Medivax to defend the muters. And then he wants to try and drop Hellbats on the Ravages to try and deal with that army. He's going to try and drop the Thors down there, but he's always oh, taking some damage. Oh my god, two Thors already going down. This is not the fight Gumi was looking for. And even that, look at that. The Thors get stolen. Unfortunately for Serral, they're in the shit fire mode, so they actually don't do much damage. The Battle Cruisers get taken down by the Corruptors, though. And Serral, just all over this game, start to finish the perfect opening. Zergling speed into Overlord speed. No surprises for Gumiho in that game. Well deserving of a sip of juice. All right, all right, all right. Game number two here, guys. Cystorm Gaming's Gumiho in the top right side of the map. He's going to have another shot at it. His last opening honestly went terribly for him because this man is a strategic mastermind and he is one of the best preparation players in the game. The number of times he has gotten... Uh, you know, free wins versus Raynor in the last year or two in their dead, just through his planning and strategizing. Very intelligent, and you give him the information, he will run away with the game. This is several. And I feel like Mech is, is one of those styles where, you know, I'd love to see how it goes. Because Kumi is pretty good, actually, at playing just standard Mech in a longer game. Um, if you if you play like a 3cc opening, something a bit more standard... As Gumiho, because Serral's unlikely to Bane Bust or hit you with super fast, crazy attacks. 
you know, be just a little bit greedy, right? And, and obviously he kind of tried that with the command center first in the last game. This time a bit more standard with the barracks gas. I'd like to see him, you know, uh, just do that. Just because I want to see, well, how does it play out up against Serral? Um, that being said, Gumiho is all about unpredictability. He sees the advantage in that. And historically, when Gumiho is playing against someone... Oh, he took his gas super late. He's going... One Rex expand. But he goes command center before orbital. Oh, he's doing a, tw a 21 orbital command center. Oh my. This is a Gumiho special, guys. Look at that. It's a 21 orbital build. That's crazy. Nobody... Nobody does 21 orbital. Everyone does 19 orbital and marine. You could call it 20 orbital because you built the marine. What the hell? Gumio is just like, nah, I want to get my command center 20 seconds earlier. If I'm going to skip the reaper anyway and build two marines and look for the snipe on the overlord, I might as well. And he's going to float the other marine. Uh, oh, sorry. Pop the marine, float the barracks as well. Now that overlord's out to the left. He's looking to the right. He should see it going there to the pillar. And then he's just got to stop the overlord getting to the dead space off to the left. And with two marines, he should be able to. So, Serral there. He's got to leave one Marine on each side. Make sure there's no escape. And uh, that barracks. Wait, he's building a third Marine, though. Oh, there's already six Zerglings here. He's like, dude, what the hell? You're meant to go hatch first every game. You're a macro god. Serral's like, eh. Um, you, realize, you realize how late your Marines are, right, boy? You realize this was a hatch first? No, it wasn't. That was pool first. That's, I'm like, what? How does he have six Zerglings that early? That was, in, in fact, a pool first again. So, Serral... Trying to punish these greedy openings of Gumio. Now, Gumio will still go after that Overlord. Four Marines. Problem is that the factory doesn't have an add-on on it. So he's going to have to just build a tech lab. So he's going to go Marine straight into Banshee by the looks of it. Interesting build order. So let's get that Overlord there. Now, funny thing about Glittering Ashes, for those who don't know. This is a map which is actually a Dwarven mining facility for golden shiny minerals. Isn't that beautiful? Unfortunately, despite that, every single base has blue minerals. Super lame. Map maker. I don't know if you're trolling or what, but how can you put gold minerals all over the map for aesthetics and then not actually provide gold mineral bases? People who, who, who don't like playing against Zerg players on gold base maps. Probably thank you for it, but nonetheless, an interesting design choice. Would love to hear the backstory for that one. Banshees with Cloak on the way. We're going to have the reactor on the factory. Factory's going to build a tech lab. Now, he doesn't want to use the tech lab. He just wants to make use of the factory so that he can swap these two around, make as much use of his units as he can, and he drops a very quick third command center in the main base. Serral takes his third over there. Keep in mind, guys, units lost this time around. Five Zerglings for an Overlord. This is much better for Gumiho this time around. Yeah, he had to pull a few SCVs down, but he got the Overlord. He got some Zerglings, and uh, it does indeed make a bit of difference there. Stim's on the way. Um, okay, so yeah, I was saying how Gumiho, he, predict, he likes unpredictability. I, I feel like every best of three, he goes bio at least once. Even though it doesn't usually go that well when he's playing against a, a true god of, of, of Zerg, you know, if he can disguise it and they get kind of stuck on the train of thinking he's playing mech, it can be good. Problem we saw in that last game is, I mean, if you're just going to play like Mutaling Bane for a bit and then go into Roaches, I mean, that's not the worst thing to be playing against a bio player. Because by the time you're swapping into Ravages, you're going to know it's Bio. So you can just take that part of the build away and say, Hey, I opened Muta Zergling. And I don't think that's the worst thing for Serral. Who, as we said, very scouting-oriented player. I think as soon as that layer's done, we probably see maybe this Overlord morph into an Overseer. And we see a pretty early scout. Interestingly, he builds two Ebays. But he builds one in the wall. That's fascinating. Oh, sorry guys. Banshee flies in, gets two drones. Gets out of there. There will be an Overseer on the way shortly. Bad observing from Pig as per usual. Ooh, just barely loses the Banshee. Not a great start for Gumiho. No Hellions being active on the map as well. So this creep's starting to already spread very rapidly. The cancerous growth of Zerg creep spread across the map inexorably covering the surface. And it's a big map. So that creep, it's going to add up to a lot. The further you get that out, the more pathways it has to spread across to go everywhere. And uh, Marine's going to come over to that third base. They're going to try and defend the Zergling. Does see that third base. Sees a few Marines as well. Sarah, like I said, if he's planning to go Muters versus Mech anyway, just to get control over the match, it's not a bad way to start versus Bio. We'll see if Gumio can surprise him and find a window in there to do some damage. 
He is, of course, down about 15 workers, but he's going up to five barracks. He's got two medevacs, lots of marines on the way. And Gumio here is going to be trying to just kind of get to that next step. Reacted Factory as well. So he's opting for the quick Widow Mines. Very good versus Muta play, of course, to go straight on into that. Zergling's all over the map. Serral, he gets in there. He confirms more barracks. He knows exactly what he's up against. A few more Zergling scouts getting cleaned up around the place. The Overseer's coming in. Gumio would love to kill that. But nice micro by Serral. Pulls it to the left, pulls it back, pulls it out of there. Queen's there as well. We've got Bane Speed on the way. No Evo Chambers just yet for Serral. He's gone for the Muta style. That spends all of his gas on Mutas for a little while, which means his upgrades will naturally be very far behind Gumiho. But these first few engagements are what's more important. Yeah, you got 1-1, one, one, but there's Mutas out. So your Metavacs aren't going to be able to retreat very easily. Marines coming on towards the south side of this map. Double Evo Chamber there on the way. Serral looking very focused right now. He hasn't really had much pressure on him in this game until this point. But Gumio's equal on supply. And he's got a Widow Mine bio drop moving out the left side as well. Now that creep being delayed, definitely quite important. But oh, Mutaling Bane's looking to surround him. Gumio, Gumio, you gotta get out of here, bro. Ooh, he's gotta focus the Banes, I think. Yeah, not the Mutas, the Banes. Good, oh no, no, not good enough. I was like, good focus fire. Not good enough focus fire, unfortunately. He's gonna lose that Medivac potentially. The Muta Micro is very good. Serral going in and just picking off a few units at a time. Gumio has got to dive that left side to punish Serral for being over here. But I think that might end up... The thing is, if Serral can swing back, clean up the right this efficiently, and then deal with the left, this is where things get really nasty. Because now you've just used your boost defensively. You know the Muta Ling's coming over here. He's only got five Marines. He's got six Marines! This is almost purely Widow Mines! Oh, Gumio's got to leave. He's got to leave right now. Serral will not take kindly to you being in his base. You've got to get out of there, bro. Serral is going to be on the hunt. He's on the warpath. He's angry after having to play Clem so much recently. And he wants to stomp some Terrans. Gumiho finds himself up against the Zerg, who is incredibly well prepared here. Serral looking very excited and eager to crush over the top of this. Gumiho is going to try and bring some reinforcements. Regain control of this position. 2-2 two, two upgrade. Start up for the Terran. Where are the Evo chambers? They've finished, but they have not started up. Upgrading. He's going up to 16 muters. Several looking very focused. I mean, he doesn't look like he's tilted or anything, but definitely a single banshee just being annoying. And finally, melee starts. Carapace still has not kicked on up. If you end up with 0 0 or 0 1 bio -ling, uh, mutiling bane versus 2 2 bio, even for one fight, that'll probably be game ending. Unless you have an overwhelming number of bane links, which do not care about upgrades. Okay. Oh, this is a very, very wild Widow Mine movement to just walk those in the middle of your opponent's morph. Gumio apparently very brave in this scenario. He's got a lot of units coming across this gigantic map. And this map is so huge. It's so hard. It is so hard to finish this off. And those Marines there are going to try and pull on back. There's more Widow Mines there. He's going to have to detonate the Banelings. Great detonate. Four Widow Mines in a tight formation. A big mistake from Gumiho. Serral quick to punish. Serral's hatchery very low, though. If he can't hang on to this fourth base, he's going to be in big trouble. He's losing Mutas. The 1-1 one, one advantage versus the 0-0 zero, zero is big. The Queens are finally here. But dude, Gumiho has actually cracked on through. And he takes a map there. It looked like he was getting nothing done. And he actually manages to break Serral with the upgrade advantage. Bloody well played by Gumi. Okay, guys, let's go. Game number three down here in the bottom right side. This is Serral. A little frustrated after that last game. But uh, I think he's going to be up against Mech again, just because of the architecture of this map. His opponent, let's see, he's going back to Command Center first. Gumio. He's been struggling against the pool first openings from Serral. But this time, Serral's gone back to Hatch first. Now, what's exciting about this map is a few things. Number one, tiny main base. Really hard to even fit all your buildings in here as a Terran tiny natural there's not much room in here guys but you do have a tight ramp very easy to defend once you get out though big open spaces once you get out on the map a little bit this base is okay until you break those rocks down but there's a few different ledges now keep in mind guys uh we have created the ladder version so there is a, a no creep zone here actually um definitely something i got to keep in mind there is also two destructible rocks on top of site blockers in the middle we've got watchtowers in the bottom left and top right of curious minds uh, and I believe this is the map which was the, the Roomba uh, Fan Laboratory, a kind of funny map for a while. And guys, is he doing... Oh my god, he's doing the three racks. It's the bomber build. It's the, the Beyond. I mean, Beyond's been doing this a bit. I even saw... I, I, I seen Uthermal do this. 
Um, I think I think I saw you thermal do this one time. I, I definitely have seen a few Terrans. Command Center first into three racks bio. So Gumio is going to look for like stim marine pressure across the map. And this is one of those builds which can look fantastic or kind of impotent. It's about maintaining um, a sort of indefatig indefatigable pressure. Uh, it's like this, you, you roam the map with Marines and you kind of faint like you're going to attack and you pull back and then you push and you pull back without actually committing on creep. And then uh, sometimes, and it's so different player to player, you just stim and you just charge and you try to focus their banes down and sometimes you win the game. And it can just kill people. It can be such a good build where you just surprise them with the marine timing and they just die. And there can also be games where honestly, um, you just get surrounded by Ling Bane and overwhelmed because the problem you have is this is not a very mobile army. Even when you get Stim, your factory, your starports, your medevacs, your hellions, all of that stuff is gonna be very, very uh, immobile. It's it's a you know slow blob of units. You get flanked on creep by Ling Bane, your army gets absolutely crushed. And the thing is you don't have the, the hellions poking at the edge threatening to dive at all times so zerg players sometimes just get very greedy early on against this build get away with it and then they run away with the game serral though not a very greedy player he's played exceptionally safe so far in this series and i think if there's ever a player who might fall victim to it it very well may be serral whereas i imagine a guy like raynor for whatever reason um you know or a dark for instance a raynor or a dark i imagine both of those guys I don't know why, I just can't imagine them losing to it. I can imagine Serral maybe playing a bit too safe early on and then falling behind in the economy. Already, look at this. Safety Baneling Nest. Serral doesn't know what's going on. He's trying to get in with this Overlord, but he's building a Safety Baneling Nest. He's at equal workers with Gumiho, which is pretty bad for Zerg this early on. He sees the Tech Lab, uh, or sorry, the two reactors actually. He's going to see the Tech Lab on the barracks. The Marines will come back in. Gumiho is going to have his build order scouted. The response for Serral, let's go to Serral's camera. Let's watch first person view, guys. He's droning right now, injecting very hard, focusing on his creep. Notice there's no units in the production tab. He realizes, okay, you don't have a very flexible army. I have a Baneling Nest. If I see you move out, I'll react with Zerglings, but he's gonna keep a bit of supply free to do that, that reaction when needed. And he's gonna focus pretty hard on his greed in the meantime. Notice he's got those lings set up around the map. He's making sure he sees when anything moves out, and he's just working on his macro. As we go back to everyone's camera, he starts to lair an extra gas. That's going to unlock the ability to go towards Baneling speed. And I imagine he's going to go double Evo Chamber in the near future as well. I don't think Sarah will play quick muters against this, because the, the upgraded Marines are going to be coming across the map very hard and fast. And already, we've got a squad there. That is about 14 Marines moving across the map. Does he drop a scan? He's already noticed, just by moving forward and threatening, get some active tumors kind of scares Serral a little bit, forces some Banelings to be morphed. And Serral has to react. He's got to build Zerglings. This stops him from building that drone advantage. Now, as Serral, do you go back to drones or do you overcommit to the Ling Bane and look to crush the army? For now, it feels like mostly Zerglings in production. Gumiho's getting Medivax and he's gone into a factory with Attack Lab. No third command center. This feels to me like Gumiho is going to go all in. The question is, where does he want to push on this third base? I think up here. If he can get tanks up on that ledge, behind that ledge, that'd be a really good push angle on the third base. In the middle of the map, I don't know if there's any good enough ledges for the siege tanks. Maybe he can get siege tank up there. That might be a good position. But definitely, it looks like one of these super committed armies that is going to go for it. He's going to try and clean up the Overlord. Oh, Serral! Just, yep. Overcommit to the army. Maybe he's not looking good economically. He doesn't care if he's going to find fights like that. Stim is finished, but combat shields and plus one kick in right after he loses about 14 Marines. That's a very good time to take that fight. Serral going for the upgrades, going Baneling speed and Carapace. He's taken the wind out of the sails for Gumiho. Gumiho drops a third command center. He's still got a bunch of tank bio at home, but it's dangerous to commit with it. He gets one queen for a couple of Marines. Does clean up some creep. They're going to replace that very quickly, though. Serral is going to take the top right corner. I love this expansion pattern. I normally think of people taking this fourth and fifth base, but he's just expanding along the side of the map. He says, this is a pretty small map. I want to maximize the space between you and me. I don't want Terran pushers to arrive on my doorstep with no warning. Gumio is going to doom drop the main like it's a TVT. Three medevacs and marines. One with a siege tank added in there as well. Four medevacs, I should actually say. Does he siege the tank? He does. Now, obviously, the tank's going to lose its life no matter what, but he's going to see what he can kill before it goes down. And actually, no. He says, okay, quick reaction, quick pull. That's fine. I'll just pick up and leave. And he can, oh, he's going to be annoying. He could even siege the tank on the low ground. 
Oh, that's very annoying, actually. This is not an area you want to fight because there's only this area here, here, and here to get into this little pocket where these units are hanging. Serral says, no worries, I'll backstab you, mate. Raise the depot. Gumio, raise the depot, bro. Okay, raises the depot. The, the reinforce is being medevaced across the map. So no chance to cut off the reinforce on the way over. Looks like one medevac did get very low. Tank on the low ground, gonna shell on these queens. But it takes a long time for a single tank to kill queens, guys. He's gonna try and put a tank in the corner. Very cute play here. Uh-oh, got a Ling Bane coming forward. That tank's gonna be toasted, but he's gonna save the Marines, get them back to the low ground. Gumiho doing a very frustrating elevator. Serral's wall of queens says, how about some transfuse? This wall is not gonna go down without a fight. That is a tanky set of queens that is going to stall this push out for a long time and that buys time for bane speed and soon one one to kick in so the upgrades will tie up kumiho is not all in but he's definitely quite committed and you know what he's surrounded he's got to leave saves the marine saves the tanks the ling bane goes across the map but kumiho should be able to defend there just fine uh he's got to siege that tank though oh no he does not think serral's going to push his ramp and you know what he's correct serral will not zergling baneling running to the north side Marines trying to go north as well. Ling Bane moving their way forwards to track it. 2-2 two, two starts up. That's where the huge upgrade power spike lies. Serral makes it to 2-2. Two, two. It's completely bad, terrible shit time for Gumiho. Gumiho's got five barracks. He's got good production. He's going to build libs as well. So Gumiho's playing this, hey, you don't have things that shoot up style. It's the style that Hero Marine has used a little bit in the last few months to uh, make some surprising, surprising victories happen, right? You do a big double marine drop, you siege two liberators with it, queens have a big problem dealing with that. And this Massling Bane style that Serral's playing, it's gonna struggle sometimes. Loses his fourth base, he's back to three hatcheries, is Serral. Gumiho's economy is what scares me. Six SCVs only on the third. Marine scanning from the south side. He's looking for these big engagements. On the top, though, Gumiho, you got to pick up. Ooh, okay, good pick up. Save some of the Marines. Does only lose a few of them. These tanks are still setting up in these corners. He's working these angles very well. And Serral's going to come on in there. The tank doesn't shoot the Banelings. Picks up the Marines at the last second. Tank goes down. And Marines in the top side still denying the fourth, getting rid of some of the creep spread. No SCV production, no armory. Gumiho is all in. Gumiho is completely all in, but he's running out of time. The time ticking out of the hourglass is those upgrades there. If they kick in, things go from bad to worse for Gumiho. That being said, a 20 army supply lead. And if Serral gets over eager and takes some sloppy fights off, creep. Oh, slow response from Gumiho. He was looking at these Marines on the top side. Serral, you'll notice he's so consistently engaging two areas at once. He says, look over here get surprised over here. And that's exactly what he keeps doing. Tank Liberator coming forward. The Marines will come forth. And they do have Stim. Combat Shields 1-1 one, one, plus 2 Carapace kicking in in 10 seconds. I'd love to see Serral backstab this. I think the easiest way to dismantle is Surround or to backstab against these sort of overcommitted pushes. Serral, he's going to have to give up that hatch. He cancels it. He's got a flank ready here. He does not have the Watchtower right now. He does actually. He's even got a Creep Tumor underneath this army seeing everything. Creep Tumor is giving such great vision of the Zerg. It literally is just spying on them. And Gumiho, he's got a tank on the back. He's about to get surrounded. Uh-oh. Oh, Gumiho, oh, he's picks it up. He saves his Marines. The tanks are going to go down, as will the Liberators. That's too many Queens. Liberators, like I said, really hard for Queens to deal with. But that's more Queens than you're used to seeing. That is a several of Queens. A several of Queens is when you take too many Queens, you add six more, and then you make sure they're stacked up, juice to the gills on transfuse energy. The Ling Bane goes in, he gets 15 SCVs on the third base. The Ling Bane's gonna back on off. Liberator's still having a bit of a party over the top there. Marine tank pushing forward on the south side. Ling Bane gonna push forward on the north. We've got Vipers on the way. 3-3 upgrades and adrenal glands as well. I mean, I talked about 2-2 being a power spike. 3-3 is game over time 16. The Ling Bane army still very powerful. Can he answer the Liberators though? It's still a massive army supply lead. Guys, I, I think Serral actually can't fight this front on. I don't know if this is the right engagement. Can he do it? Plus two carapace is godlike. Plus two carapace is so good. But if the Liberators beat the Queens, this might actually work for Gumiho. This might work for Gumiho. He keeps two Liberators alive. Yes, he does lose a lot of his important units. And the backstab on the third might actually be the killing blow. That tank on the high ground has 20 kills. It's going to get even more. The problem is always that army supply, guys. It's always, always the army.
army supply. And he's down 20 army supply. 3-3 three, three in Adrenal Glands. That's GG if it kicks in. But it's not going to have time to kick in. Serral needs to hold this right here, right now. He needs to defend this hatchery. He's got Vipers as well. He's gone to the late game tech against the guy who's essentially doing a protracted two base all in. Has Serral been too greedy? I don't know, man. He's got to abandon this fourth. He's going to transfer drones to the top right. He's still way up on mining. Look at the, the, the income. It's just out of this world in that top left side. There's so little money coming in for Gumio. He's got to put all these workers back on his third. Gumio has been stuck in a desperate all-in for a long time, and he's making it way closer than it should be. Fresh mules dropping, though. Serral Zerglings would love to chow down on some fresh mule with some minerals in their hands. The Ling's waiting a bit. Gumio's going to pull back for a moment, regroup, and then come across the map. Tank shoots the Zerglings. Marines clean him up. Serral too quick for that. Serral never gets caught, mate. Man, I think Serral's pretty frustrated. He's having to work so hard. These are now adrenal 2-2 Zerglings, though. 2-2 starts for Gumio. <laughs> I don't think... I don't know, man. I feel like just keep building libs and knuckle down on the desperate situation that you're in. I feel like maybe Gumi's like, well, I killed another expansion? Maybe I'm still in the macro game? But 3-3 upgrades are about to kick in. So for those who don't know, each of these Marines is basically going to be uh, one of those people where you make eye contact with them and they look away nervously and shudder. That's the level of self-confidence these 1-1 one -one Marines have. Whereas each of these Zerglings, when 3-3 kicks in, this is going to be literally a guy who makes eye contact with you for two seconds and you are pregnant. You didn't even know you could get pregnant. You're like, oh no! And then suddenly, bam! You didn't even think you were fertile and shit. I mean, honestly, these Zerglings are just so overpowered. It's 3-3 three, three Adrenal Zerglings versus 1-1 one, one Marines. I cannot overstate how overpowered that upgrade difference is. It is obscene. Gumio is trying to hang in there. He's trying to go into this like harass upgrade catch-up game. But I think doubling down on the all-in was actually the way to go. I think he needed to just keep it going. He had a big army supply advantage. But the moment he let Serral kind of just cal calmly collect himself... Not only did the upgrades kick in, but Serral regrew that army supply. He, he started respreading creep. He's controlling the sides. And I mean, a dicey, I think a dicey uh, kind of run in with a Terran who committed way more to the all in than he ever thought he would. It was like the, the Beyond style fake third command center where it's like, I show you a command center. So you think I'm playing a macro game, but I never build any workers for it. And it almost worked. It did almost break through. But now this fourth command center going down is a bit of an afterthought. The upgrade lead, as we've talked about, is, is crazy. I mean, 2-2 will kick in in about 30 seconds. And that'll make it only a double upgrade lead for Serral's units. But uh, it looks like despite Gumiho finding some cool angles down here, he tried to also siege up tanks up here. We saw him really utilize some of these areas of the map. And um, we actually just saw Serral kind of adjust himself in his chair a little bit there. He's like, all right, all right. Man, I had to play so late last night. God damn, so many tournaments. Oh, Ling Bane, Ultra, big parasitic bomb. I like that. Engage, disengage, just take a good fight, pull back, bring this Ling Bane in from the other side when you do finally collapse. There's no need to force the issue just now. He's thinking about just busting. Serral, easy there, buddy. Maybe break those rocks down in the middle if you want to do that. Spy is on the way. Once they add Corruptors, he's got Anabolic Synthesis. For those who don't know, that is plus 10% Ultra Movement Speed on... Off? Off Creep. Off Creep. They're, they're the same on Creep, but Off Creep, they get a bit of a Movement Speed buff. People complained that Ultras were a bit too uh, bad in the late game, just getting kited to death, unless you got a surround. And they did add that in. It's still kind of expensive. I think it's like 200, 150 for an upgrade. It's kind of marginal, marginal, but uh, the longer the game goes, does sometimes end up worth it. And we've got Marine Marauder all over the shop. Command Center is floating down to the bottom left as well. Five Barracks is up. And plus one range is on the way as well. Ling Bane Ultra all over. He's looking for the engagement. He's looking for it. Parasitic bombs. Watch for the parasitic bombs. Oh, that one. The, the, the Liberators are all sieged. Get out of there. Take those bees out of here, bro. Thankfully, he does have some repair SCVs. Another one comes in. Serral's like, you better spread them all, mate. Gumio very quickly spreads the limbs out. Serral's like, come on, man. I got you cornered, bro. And uh, he's, he's just waiting right now like a tiger in the grass for one of the gazelle to kind of walk away from the herd. The moment he sees an opening, he's going to pounce. Gumio's like, I I'm going to try and do a big push. Serral is just going to deny this base on the left literally forever. And the moment he exposes himself, Gumio's going to get pounced on. Okay, we've got Ultralings on the left. 
Ling Bane Ultra there. Ling's coming in. Queen's from the right side. Gonna try and deal with this. Corruptor's coming out. Very important. That's a lot of Ling Bane. Apologies for the slight lag spikes there, guys. That is the server causing us a few little spiky spikes. But the Ultras are just gonna roll over. Every single Liberator that Kumiho spent all game building up will go down. And 106 Zerglings in the Remax there. And Serral escapes a very stressful series. Gumi bro doesn't make it easy. GG, well played.